It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Towards the beginning of the video, you guys saw a clip of a bunch of kindergarteners shouting out Black Lives Matter and forming a line and also holding up picket stick. This occurred in Washington, D.C. and the video was also posted by libs of TikTok, so credits to that commentary page right there for uploading the video for everybody to see just what happened within that elementary school. Natural Black Lives Matter at School Week of Action Starter Kit. What you'll find inside will be an introduction to the Black Lives Matter School Week of Action, Black Lives Matter School Week of Action Natural Demands, the 13 Guiding Principles of Black Lives Matter, and how to talk to young children about the Black Lives Matter Guiding Principles. Black Lives Matter at School is a natural committee of educators organizing for racial justice in education. We encourage all educators, students, parents, unions, and community organization to join our annual week of action during the first week of February each year. The Black Lives Matter at School movement first started in Seattle during the fall of 2016 when thousands of educators in Seattle came to school on October 19th wearing shirts that says Black Lives Matter, we stand together. Hundreds of families and students did so. Many of the shirts also include the message, Say Your Name, a campaign to raise awareness about the often unrecognized state violence and assault of women in our country. The action attracted national news, helping it spread to Pennsylvania. That city's Council of Working Educators Racial Justice Committee expanded the action to last an entire week that year with teaching points across the principles of Black Lives Matter. Educators in Redchester, New York also held a Black Lives Matter at School Day in 2017. During the 2017-2018 school year, from February the 5th to the 9th, thousands of educators across the U.S. wore Black Lives Matter shirts to school and taught lessons about structural racism, intersectional black identity, black history, and anti-racist movement for a nationally organized week of action. Black Lives Matter at school educators in over 20 cities participated in this natural uprising to affirm that the life of black students, teachers, and family, including Seattle, Pennsylvania, Los Angeles, Chicago, Detroit, Boston, New York City, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., and beyond. The lessons that educators taught during the week of action corresponded to the 13 getting principles of Black Lives Matter. Monday, restorative justice, empathy, and loving engagement. Tuesday, diversity and globalism. Wednesday, trans-affirming, career-affirming, and collective value. Thursday, intergenerational black families and black villages. And Friday, black women and unapologetically black. As you guys can see, there has been a conceited effort by Black Lives Matter to go at the little kids to convert them to their movement. And honestly, to me, there's no difference between what they're doing and what a religious person is doing towards kids. Because honestly, when you look at the world's religion, particularly Christianity, what they would do is that they would target little kids to convert them to their faith and preying upon their innocence of them not knowing much. And it's the same thing that is applying to, of course, the little kids who are being targeted for Black Lives Matter. Because honestly, they don't have the experience, they don't have the knowledge to make a decision to whether or not support the movement or not. And honestly, I find this whole entire idea to be incredibly sickening. For example, the kids are not old enough to know that Black Lives Matter have partaken in many riots. In particular, what happened in Baltimore and the various parts of the country in 2020. They don't know for a fact that the co-founder for Black Lives Matter had bought like four different mansions. They don't know for a fact that Black Lives Matter have openly supported the Cuban government. They don't know for a fact that Black Lives Matter actually is losing like, tw like what, $60 million 
from, of course, you know, bad management of funds. They don't know for a fact that they actually got in trouble for not actually disclosing the funds toward, like, the donators for their group. And so more and more, like, none of these kids do not know any sort of these sort of details that I'm talking about. And yet, it's perfectly okay for them to target the kids. In modern day American society, there's a separation of church and state. And I'm actually in favor of that. Mostly because it's not the job of the educator to tell a student whether or not their beliefs are the true way or the highway. And so, I think separation of church and state is actually a good thing. Similarly, I think there should be a separation of politics as well as schools. Because it is not the job of a school to tell students what kind of stuff they should protest for or against. Because ultimately, I would think that schools are like neutral grounds for education to know about things like math or English or social studies or gymnastics. I don't want somebody to go to a school to convert them to a movement that they probably have no idea about and have not had the life experience to fully understand the consequences of their action. And so the sort of technique to just target little kids to convert them to Black Lives Matter activists, that to me is by definition literal indoctrination. Black teacher push out ends now. Hire more black teachers in our schools. Nine U.S. cities demonstrate a rapid decline in the number of black teachers. Boston, Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, Cleveland, New Orleans, Pennsylvania, San Francisco, and Washington, D.C. This leaves a mighty burden on the black teachers and service providers who are left behind in view as disciplinarians. Racist policies in schools and biased skill exams eliminate black and brown teaching candidates. We must increase teacher retention and opportunities for teachers of color. A lack of black teachers could be like a number of different factors when you really think about it. I don't think the answer is always, well, because they're like a lack of representative of this X group, therefore racism is actually a good answer. Because when you really think about it, people have the option to choose what kind of career path that they want. For example, when it comes down to women, most women choose to be nurses or teachers or health professionals. And so they gravitate more towards that field. And as a result, they tend to earn less in comparison to their male counterparts. Similarly, there are, of course are black people within the community who they make their own personal life decisions to whether or not to be a teacher or not. Now, teaching in general is understaffed in comparison to other fields. And so maybe the lack of teachers in general could be the fact that many people, including black people, are not that interested in becoming teachers in comparison to other parts of the fields that are provided in the United States. And so I don't believe for a single second that somebody should be hired solely based upon their skin color. They should be hired solely based upon their credentials and whether or not they're actually a good teacher or not. I know for a fact, if I was a person who hires somebody, I would not hire somebody because of course of their race or hire somebody if they want to preach some sort of political activism on the kids. Because again, like I said earlier, Black Lives Matter is a political movement. Now some people might say, no, Black Lives Matter is not political. It's something that's actually universal and so therefore not political. Dude, they openly fund the freaking Democrats. And so you cannot necessarily tell me that this whole entire movement does not have some sort of ideology behind it or something like that. No, no, no. They get money towards like the Democrats. They go out and protest, they burn stuff down. So sorry, you can't tell me for a single second that that movement is not some sort of political movement in general that want to target little kids. Like I said earlier, 
as there's a separation of church and state, there should be a separation of political matters and schools. Because more or less, targeting little kids to indoctrinate them into any sort of ideology, whether it's good or notable or, you know, whatever, I don't think is actually a good idea for people. When they learn about history, of course, some of it will be political in nature. I understand that fact. However, it's not the role of the school or the educators to tell kids what movement is okay to just, you know, teach the kids over and what is not okay. Because honestly, you're going to divide students. And of course, students themselves are sometimes, you know, not the very nicest of the bunch at that sort of age. And so I don't think by going after kids and about teaching them about political movements is actually a very good idea. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.